money, fabric dye, bras, and going international, all on this episode of Rona the Riveter, the Traveling Quilter. I'm Rona the Riveter, also known as the Traveling Quilter. I travel the globe from quilt shows to quilt tours, shop hops to quilt retreats, and everything in between. <laughs> Won't you join me for a quilt adventure? I'm Mark Ingram, and I'm the director of Original Sewing and Quilt Expo. It's a multi-city, multi-market, consumer retail event for sewers, quilters, and machine embroiderers. When, uh, when a newbie, yeah. or a rookie quilter, or okay. someone who has never attended a quilt show event of a national caliber, they will see the top educators and the top retailers that are available showing some of the coolest, newest, innovative stuff. We have so much technology, uh, which I always return to. The technology in sewing is just phenomenal. There's so many new things, notions, robots, just, just computer software, so many things to make our lives easier and to get us going on projects faster, ramping up quicker, and delivering a product that looks almost professionally made or professionally made. So that's part of like what you'll see versus maybe just being in a smaller, uh, kind of very regional. It's load-in day. This is the day that most people never get to see. This is the day that vendors from around the country, and some from even outside the United States, bring all their offerings to the showroom floor to set up their booths and prepare for opening day of the quilt show. Good morning, I'm Dave Reba with Vivilux LED Lights. Our corporate name is Harbor Sales and Vivilux is our brand name. We make LED lights and lasers for sewing, quilting, and crafting. How long does it usually take you to set up your booth before the show starts? I've pared our booth down to where it takes me about two and a half to three hours. Do you have kind of a set way that you set everything up or is it a little bit different each time? How does that happen? Well that's what perplexes me because we have basically the same setup for every show and every show is unique because you take a look at for example the traffic flows, which direction are most of your visitors coming from. Realizing by the middle of the show they're coming from all directions, but there is a flow through the, the show floor. So the first thing you have to figure out is, you know, are you positioned in the right spot? Are you, you know, where where your customers are? So every show becomes unique, even though it's all kind of variations on the same thing. I'm Jan Larson. I'm a silversmith. I make and sell sterling silver thimbles and sewing tools. Do you have um, like a regular setup routine for your show? I do. I kind of keep the stuff that goes down first in the biggest bag. Uh, and the first things in my show are getting these big pictures hung up because then I set my tables underneath them and so getting the big pictures hung up getting the top stuff done first and getting the tablecloth on the table and then when I start unpacking bags and making a big mess the cloth is already down I don't have to clear off again and start over so the last thing that comes out is inventory and that was what was in my carry-on bag so that little bag just sits in the corner until I get my life pulled together here it takes about an hour to an hour and a half and if it's kind of a first show for a while, um, it takes longer because I've got to put every little piece on every little display. I do a lot of that at home and kind of pull it together so that each of these individual chatelaines are pulled together at home and just sit in a, in a Ziploc bag and I can layer them into a, a case, but um, it does take a minute, you know, to pull it all together, so. How, many, or how long have you been doing shows? About 20, we actually started, uh, and this, this is the original Sewing and Quilt Expo. Uh, and we actually started with the original Sewing and Quilt Expo over 20 years ago when they were a small little family run show doing a little regional show. And they did a show in Clearwater, Florida, which is not too far from where we are. Uh, and we started there and we've been with them ever since. And then of course we've branched out into the other national shows and, and of course the guild shows, but about 20 years. I travel a lot. So the whole traveling quilter thing means a lot. 
I do between 30 and 40 shows a year, so I'm out on the road all the time. How far do you travel for the different shows? Um, I travel everywhere. I mostly fly. Um, my my product is very small. They're heavy, but they're small. And so all of the metal usually goes with me in my carry-on and then the display stuff and my clothes go into the checked bags. And so I can travel anywhere I want. This week I'm in North Carolina and next week I'm in Sacramento, California. So it's a lot of travel. This week in Ribbons Tip of the Week, when you're attending a national size quilt show, always pre-register online and my biggest tip is pre-register as soon as you possibly can and the reason for this is because several of the workshops that go on are going to sell out pretty quickly especially the more popular ones with the big name designers and teachers that sort of thing the sooner you register for those workshops, the higher the probability that you can get in. Not to mention, some of the shows actually will have the first so many people that register. I've actually seen this at a couple shows where they give you uh, a freebie, like uh, a preview night where you get in to the vendor mall for one or two hours before the show even opens. So it always, always, always is a good idea to register online as soon as you can for those national size quilt show workshops. So how many people do you have on your team to organize a show of this size? Ooh, that's a great question too. I, you know, I, I uh, sometimes am really surprised at how much we can do with how few people we work with. We, there are, in our core group in our office, there are five people. And, and I work with some of the most amazing independent contractors who join us traveling from show to show. And so we bring in about another six or eight independent contractors. How long in advance do you start the process? Yeah, I think that some of the mass media advertising that I planned out started about 13 months ago. And, and that was partly because we, we were still under those COVID shutdowns. And so we were taking the long view I would say normally we plan about nine to 11 months out it is kind of our rotation. We, we get we get through an event, so on a repeat show, we get through the event, we take a little breather, and then at about month month 11, not 10 and nine from the show, then that, that's when we kind of buckle down and, and talk about the things we need to do and figure out who should be coming back who was successful there as a teacher and where on the surveys we see we have weaknesses and that we need to invite other kinds of faculty in to, to kind of fulfill those needs. So how long does it take you to plan for a show for instance from the moment you register to actually arriving at the show about how long is that time frame? I actually have shows from 2023 on my calendar already. So at least so one to two years out. One to two years. A solid year. I, my calendar kind of books up about a year in advance. I know pretty much where I'm going to be for the next 12 months. Uh, and then, of course, you've got gaps. And then something may show up in the gap. Uh, but by and large, uh, the, uh, the guilds, especially the guilds that do biennial shows, every other year shows, they're already booking their 2023 shows. Hey guys, okay, so we are now ready to rock and roll. We got the booth set up. Can't really see it too well, because <laughs> I'm in it. But uh, booth is set up and we are ready to go. The doors are about to open and everybody's gonna walk in the front door and we're gonna meet and greet and I can't wait to see who all comes, who I get to meet today and this is, this is gonna be fun. So here comes day one of the Reno Quilt Show. The first day of a quilt show is always the most exciting. And that was definitely true at the Quilt Show Reno in Nevada last year, 2021. And we were, I don't think any of us vendors were quite prepared for what we saw on that first day on Thursday, because we were told right before the doors opened on Thursday that there was a line, now, that year we were in the nugget and we were on the second floor in one of the ball the grand ballrooms right that's where the vendor mall was located and there was a line down the escalator and practically out the door 
<laughs> that's how many people had showed up on the first day that were all super excited and ready to go. And you know what? We as vendors, we love that. We love that excitement of the first day and greeting everybody and getting to show everybody what we have and talk about the things that we have that we've made that we use that you guys should use and really just getting to have conversations with fellow quilters. I mean, that's really one of my favorite things about vending at a quilt show is getting to meet all of you. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be a vendor? Or if you've already vended, how do you know that you're ready to vend at a national size quilt show? Well, let's see. My recommendation <laughs> is yes, to have experience with some smaller events. And the first thing I would recommend is to connect with a couple of vendors who are already doing a series of events because there are four or five vendors I can think of off the top of my head who are terrific mentors who will give you the tips on how to stay stay on the cheap, travel on the cheap, how to have a good profit and loss per event and how to manage your expenses and what would be a reasonable amount of revenue. You know, I, I always tell a new vendor five times the booth rent is a good basis to where, you know, you're not going to be getting in the hole. You might not be getting rich, but you won't be in the hole at that number. And then from there, and that might help them gauge, you know, how big a booth. And, and you've got to tinker with things, because sometimes bigger booth means more money. Sometimes bigger booth doesn't mean more money. It just means more expense. And sometimes you you know you gotta go vertical. It's about merchandising. And then it's about engaging the, the attendees, demonstrating, demonstrating, asking questions, giving them a reason to spend time with you. A really nice, clean, organized booth. Yeah, mess up the booth, get some projects going, have stuff laid out, bring them in and give them something to learn and talk about. That's where uh, both the attendee is going to have more satisfaction and fulfillment and, and then you as a retailer is going to see better results. You've got to be open to seeing and listening to your customers. So you do a lot of prep work at home then? For, I do. Yeah. I try to pull it together. These displays are unique to me. It, um, it started out as a jewelry ring display and um, I had to add a lot of things. If you just put a a thimble out there on a cord they just lay sideways and it's a mess and so I've had to build all these little pegs and cover them with the black velvet and it's been a it it takes probably 40 hours to build one of these even after I purchased the piece kind of half made it's another 40 hours of putting it together so when I'm bored at a show which never happens I'm always very busy but when I'm bored at a show I have little things that I work on. And so one of the things that I brought this time is I'm, I've got more inventory than I thought and I need to have uh, another one of these great big displays. And so while I'm here, I'm velvet covering each of the little pegs. There's 72 little pegs on here and they screw on with a little screw and a, you have to use special tools to get it on, but they screw on with the screw and then everything has to be pulled through and the velvet covered. So I'm making the 72 pegs at this show. I've got my stuff all down at the end of the booth and that's what happens when early in the morning, late in the afternoon, when there's not as many people standing around, I go sit down on my thing and work. What we're doing with the shows is really two things. One, of course, is we're showcasing our products. But the other thing is we're talking to our customers and hearing the feedback from our customers of what they like, what they don't like, because all of our products evolve. You know, you do the best job you can when you develop a product, and then of course you, think, you hear all the things you didn't think about. So every one of our products go th goes through an evolutionary stage as we see what features work, what features we forgot about, and so on. So they improve over time. attended my very first quilt show, it was put on by the local quilt guild here in North Carolina. Then flash forward a few months and somebody asked me to attend a national size quilt show. My jaw dropped. There's more than one type of quilt show? Properly broken down, there's about five different types of quilt shows. Each one offers a unique experience for quilters of every skill level.
Guild Show. Quilt guilds are basically a group of quilters who get together each month to share their quilts, learn new techniques, and discuss all things quilting related. They're very much a fellowship of quilters. In fact, these quilt guilds have become so popular, you can probably find one near where you live if you haven't joined one already. Many of the larger size quilt guilds require membership dues to join and use those funds to bring in guest teachers each month for the members to learn everything from techniques to the latest quilting gadgets and everything in between. And to bring in even more funds for even bigger quilting names and teachers, many quilt guilds will host an annual or biannual quilt show. These guild quilt shows are usually of smaller size and it's easy to experience them completely in one single day. You can usually expect to see quilts by the guild members on display and quilts made by others in the community, as well as a few local vendors. Many times, local quilt shops will have a booth set up at the guild show. The next type of quilt show is actually not technically a quilt show. The next one is called a quilt marketplace. Some may argue that a quilting marketplace is not technically a quilt show. I suppose that depends on how you define quilt show. For instance, if you're looking mainly for finished quilts on display, workshops, and or demonstrations, then a quilting marketplace may not be right for you. The quilting marketplace is technically a show that brings together several quilting vendors so you can conveniently shop with them all in one place. In fact, a true quilting marketplace is somewhat of a rarity. Currently, I only know of one specifically that is put on here in North Carolina each January, but I'm sure there are more around the country that I just haven't found yet. The next quilt show on our list is the National Size Quilt Show. What does the book have to say? The most common of quilt shows visited each year are the National Quilt Shows. These quilt shows are larger than a guild quilt show and are usually organized by a large group or business. In contrast to a guild size quilt show, the national shows will have a much larger selection of quilts on display for you to enjoy, as well as an offering of quilting classes throughout the show's duration. Each national quilt show generally lasts three to four days, and depending on how many classes you attend, it may take at least two days to visit the show entirely. But I highly suggest all three days. <laughs> Their vendor mall welcomes many different vendors from all over the country, sometimes even internationally, who offer everything from unique fabrics to gadgets to sewing machines and even quilting tables. Also, many national size quilt shows will present short 15 to 30 minute free demonstrations throughout each day that give the vendors an opportunity to show you exactly what their particular products are and answer any questions that you may have. Quilt Con. Every year in February, the International Modern Quilt Guild puts on the largest modern quilt show of its kind. Taking place in a different location around the United States each year, QuiltCon focuses on the art of modern quilting. They include over 600 quilts on display, and at least two-thirds of them are juried in from the Modern Quilt Guild members around the world. In addition to the quilts, QuiltCon also hosts a number of quilting discussion panels a full vendor mall, and workshops for every skill level featuring top designers and teachers. Finally, the last quilt show on our list is the International Quilt Show. An international quilt show is the granddaddy of all quilt shows. These shows bring together quilters, teachers, vendors from all over the world into one location for several days of quilting magic. You can spend at least three to five days at an international quilt show, but even then, you probably won't be able to see and experience everything between multiple classes happening each day, hundreds of vendors, literally like 200 vendors, <laughs> and an incredible array of amazing quilts on display presented by some of the top quilters from around the world. 
You can also expect to find some of the top quilting teachers from around the world offering classes on their newest and greatest techniques and so much more. One of the best things about an international quilt show is that not only do you get to see the incredible quilting talent, but you also get to experience firsthand the cultures in which these artists reside. Each country's quilters have their own unique style and viewpoints, and they bring all of that into their quilting. In 2017, Nancy Zeman took a poll of her fans and asked them, what is your focus when attending a sewing and quilting show? Overwhelmingly, people spoke about how much inspiration and knowledge they get from the quilt shows, from the classes, demonstrations, and just chatting up your fellow quilters. You can learn more than you ever imagined at a quilt show. By the second day of the quilt show, this is usually when, it's usually a calmer day, and it's also usually the day that most of the people that had signed up for workshops on day one finally get to come out and visit us on the floor. Well, my name is Cindy Lobeck. Uh, my company is Die Hard Studio, uh, and I teach fabric dyeing. I started my business in 2007, and I didn't start out teaching. I started out vending. I had a kit in a bucket and you were gonna just take kit and go dye your own fabric. And um, it, went, it went well, but my demos would hook you guys. You would see me doing it and you would say, oh, that doesn't look as sloppy as I thought. That doesn't look as messy as I thought. That looks pretty, that looks pretty organized. And so one day I was doing a demo, I think my ice dyeing demo, and Bonnie Browning from AQS saw me. And she pulled me aside and said, you should be teaching for me. And I said, okay. And literally that year my business took a full flip. I went from just vending to walking both for a while. But now I predominantly teach. If I'm at a show teaching, the people who will buy a kid are gonna be in that class, so. So for people that are, are taking your classes, like what would you, um, or well, classes in general, I guess, what kind of things would you suggest for them as far as prepping, like getting prepared for classes, when to register, stuff like that? Well, a lot of my classes sell out very, very quickly. So if you see them and you want the class, I say don't let any grass grow. Um, more often than not, my classes sell out. Now, it's... We're, re, we're re entering the world of playing together, so they haven't been this year. But next year, I'm expecting things to pick up. Um, I say register early, and that way you have time to find the things. Lately, we can't find supplies. Plastic bins are really hard, and we need plastic bins to die in. Mm -hmm. So they're rough to find. And the earlier you know what your supply list is, the more you have time to prepare and find the right things. Yeah. Although I do provide about 90% of what you need. You just need a couple of bins to, mm -hmm. to carry stuff around it. So uh, my last question is for potential teachers, like people that are new into the quilting industry and they are looking at wanting to become a teacher at a show or at guilds, what kind of advice would you give them? I would say start small, uh, walk before you run. I, it is an overwhelming industry and there are so many ways you can take your business, whether you're a teacher or a vendor. and. It's real easy to get um, inundated with too much to do, and then you're not doing it well. And I say, walk before you run. Start slow, learn your chops, then move into the next phase. And plan, 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 always plan a year ahead. We, we are looking for teachers to fill out the proposal form on our website, the class proposal and proposal to teach form. There's two different forms and we do list some deadlines on there so so we're we're now right now we're working on um, so it's it's november so we're working on august and september of 2022 so we're, we're we're looking for them to kind of submit 
offers and proposals. Some of our faculty are signed up 12 to 16 months in advance, and some are kind of contracting and joining us in the in the 11 to nine month range. So it it kind of varies, uh, but we more notices always been around both sides. The third day of the quilt show is usually the last day. This is the day where most of us, at least myself anyways, starting to get laryngitis from talking for three days straight. Uh, this is the day where we get to meet a lot of people that may not have been able to come out to the shows for day one and day two. Sometimes they're working or have other engagements. And um, this is the day also where I usually don't have to do anything before the show opens. Like all of the stuff is is done. Uh, so there's no extra setup or anything like that if I've prepared. Uh, so the third day is usually when I like to take some time out and walk around and see all the quilts that are on display and look at all the different vendor booths, maybe talk to a few vendor friends that I didn't get a chance to chat with throughout that weekend because we really are a community. The the vendors, especially at the, the major shows, the national size shows and the international size shows, they see each other usually only at those shows and we kind of form a subculture if you will and a friendship and a bond and it's really nice to have that kind of camaraderie with these other vendors that they know what you're going through you know they they they've made all the mistakes that you've made or are making if you're new um they a lot of times will have plenty of suggestions and advice you can ask questions all that kind of stuff because like i said they've been where you are if you're new to vending um but it's just kind of a quiet time to just regroup before the doors open once again for that last push of people to come through and uh, and say hi and, and get to interact and stuff so day three is actually one of my favorite days of a quilt show so what time do, uh, what time does your day start on show days um, my alarm went off at 6 this morning, and I've got about an hour to get some coffee and a shower. And then I'm Ubering in most of the time now, and which is handy because I don't have to mess with traffic in a town I've never been to. And then um, I like to be here at least an hour before the show starts. Some of them will let me in two hours early, and that's better. Um, I like to walk through the quilts and take a deep breath. And because I'm an artist, they're very inspiring, and I love seeing what other people are doing and how they're doing it. And I also kind of take note of the ones that are doing handwork. And um, when they come to my booth, I want to be able to say, oh, I saw your quilt over there, and I recognize what's going on. And so um, it, it has been really fun. Some of the smaller guild shows have much more beautiful quilts than the ones that come to these larger, more international shows. And so I love doing that part. I walk through the, and drink a little coffee and walk through the quilts for at least an hour almost every morning and then get back to my booth and figure out what I left to mess up with last night and try and clean it up. <laughs> I've actually attended, of course, several quilt shows before I started vending at them. And one of the things that surprised me the most about, especially at the national size shows, because you expect to see uh, vendors that are selling notions and gadgets and fabrics and machines and tables and all that kind of quilting related stuff. I mean, after all, you're at a quilt show, right? One of the things I was not expecting to see was the bra lady. I am Patty the Bra Lady, and I am an independent distributor for Essential Bodywear, and we manufacture the most comfortable, uplifting, supportive bras you will ever wear. Within our company, we have uh, about 500 independent reps, so you actually can go to essentialbodywear.com you can put in your zip code and you can find a rep or number of reps how many miles away from your home. So some of us travel. So I'm here in Raleigh, but I'm from Lowell, Indiana, but I have signed up to do these quilt shows because I'm a quilter <laughs> and I'm a bra lady. <laughs> so, um, so I'm like in heaven right so now. So how many shows, is this um, like normal? Do you do a lot of quilt shows or is this kind of new? Well, for me, it's new. Um, we had another girl in the company who has done these for years. That is how I got into this. I stood at a quilt show for 30 minutes to get fit and took her card and didn't call her for 10 years. 
So when I did, I had grandchildren that needed to be fit, and this company um, goes from a 30A to a 44I, so we can fit almost anybody, and they're comfortable and supportive, so then I joined. But it all started at a quilt show for me. Has COVID changed the way that you guys are presenting or, or setting up? Has it um, really changed any of that at all? Well, we, we have gone to the one per eight foot table, you know, so I certainly think the attendees are benefiting because they're getting a lot more space. We're not putting as many people in a classroom, um, which gives everybody a lot more elbow room and flexibility and comfortability. Kind of they can stretch out on their projects, big cutting mats next to them. So in that way, that's a little different. Um, I think we've, you know, stretched out the lines and made some space. You know, in the old days it was pack them in like sardines and that was a good show. Now we're, you know, packing them in like sardines. That really wasn't comfortable for anyone anyway. And, and we're not, we're, we're trying to make, like let people in spaces where we used to hold them back and clog, clog up a whole hallway or whatever. Now we're, we're, we're letting people go through and spread out and, and we're creating more seating at the concessions areas and things like that to, to make it feel better for people and, and probably be safer. Yeah, I think that's better all around for everybody. Yeah. I think the, the mm -hmm. attendees enjoy that too. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a, Plenty it's of room to walk around and take your time and look at things. And yes. It's, they're, they're probably were some corrections that we needed to make that, you know, you just ring everything so tight after you go. Now we're reset the clock. We're on a rebuild. We're starting from scratch. And we're aiming for the moon. <laughs> Finally, the show is closed and the mad rush begins. You'd be astonished at how fast these booths can come down. Of course, having one person tear down versus two or three does make a big difference. And just like that, it's like we were never there. On to the next quilt show. This episode of Rona the Riveter, the Traveling Quilter, is brought to you by the amazing members of the Quilters community, the place where quilters from around the world come together for information, inspiration, and friendship. To learn more, visit ronatheribiter.com backslash quilters community. <laughs>